Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another fantasy romance reading vlog. So I'm very excited for today's video because I am reading fantasy romance once again. This is nothing new. However, I am going to be reading indie self-published Kindle Unlimited fantasy romances, which I'm very excited for. So let me talk about the books I'm going to be reading in this reading vlog. Number one, I've talked about this on Instagram, on YouTube, on everywhere. City of Gods and Monsters by Kayla Edwards. This is... Oh my god, you guys, I have so much hope for this book. My hopes are too high, honestly. I need to calm down, but I can't. I'm fully, like, I'm excited. I'm in it. I feel like this book is going to be amazing. So if it is not, it will be a huge huge letdown. This book, if you haven't heard me talk about it yet, it is an adult urban fantasy romance. It gets heavily, heavily compared to Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass, one of my favorite books of all time, probably top three favorite book of all time. I'm very excited. I'm nervous. I'm definitely starting with this one because I just need to freaking read it and like see how it compares and if it is going to be good because I have, as I said, very, very high hopes. But I'll go into the plot more of this one once I get started and I do my first reading update. In this reading vlog, I'm also going to be reading To Bleed a Crystal Bloom. I'll insert a picture here. I forgot the author's name, but it is a dark Rapunzel retelling adult fantasy romance. I'm so excited for that. A dark Rapunzel retelling. Are you joking? Like that sounds amazing. I will be reading that on my Kindle. And then I'm also going to be reading Song of the Marked. And I believe the author is S.M. Gaither. I will insert a picture here. Also going to be reading on my Kindle. I did request the audiobook from my library. We shall see if I receive it in time. If not, I will just physically read it on my Kindle. This book is often it's compared to like from blood and ash and i did not like from blood and ash but i like the idea of from blood and ash i just didn't like the execution i just don't think jla's writing is for me so that is why i really didn't enjoy it and once again i will go into the plot of this book once i get to it but it's definitely like a enemies to lovers two sort of unlikely allies teaming up against the royal family people in charge of the kingdom and everything and so kind of has that similar from blood and ash vibe i am excited for all three i have very high hopes i really hope we have some favorites come out of this reading vlog. I really do. Also, I believe all of these books are the first book in a series. I don't think any of them are standalones and I'm a series girl. I always want series. I much prefer series to standalone books. So I'm really hopeful that we have some gems here. I also wanted to mention I am buddy reading this with my booktube bestie Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads. I don't know when I'm posting this video, but I do know that she is doing a vlog where she's going to be reading this as well. So if her video's up, I will link it. If it's not, I will just put her channel down below. Absolutely go subscribe to her and uh, that way you guys will We'll also get to see her experience with it. We both have really high hopes. We're both obsessed with Crescent City. So we're like, we really, really want this to be a good one really, really badly. So I will check in with you guys once I have started this book and give you my initial thoughts. Okay. Hello guys. It is time for my first check-in for City of Gods and Monsters. This beast right here. I don't know how much I'm going to hold it because it is so GD heavy. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to say too much. I'm loving this so far though, you guys. I'm really excited. I'm really scared because I don't want to get too excited and then be disappointed. And I may contradict myself in future clips, but I'm just saying right now, this is going really well. I'm going to keep this spoiler free, but let me just tell you where I'm at in the novel and then I'll give you kind of my thoughts. Uh, the book starts with our main character. Her name is Lauren. She is just a human girl living in a supernatural world. She has her two best friends who are also actually her adopted sisters. So Lauren is an orphan and she was adopted by her best friend, Dallas and Sabrine's family. They're also sisters, but she kind uses the term sisters and best friends interchangeably. In the first chapter, we get right off to the races. We have this big action scene and Sabrine ends up getting kidnapped by these like dark slayer types. And they make it very clear though, they wanted Lauren, but because the police were coming, they just sped off with Sabrine. Lauren obviously feels terribly guilty, doesn't know what to do. Um, and is also very confused. Like, why would you want me? I am just a simple, lowly human. I have a feeling she's probably not. And we're going to have a chosen one trope. That is not a spoiler. That is just me putting on my tinfoil hat and thinking that's probably where the story is going and I'm here for it. She's very confused about why this is happening. So she kind of starts to investigate. While she's investigating though, there are more people who are hunting for her and she is like, crap, what am I going to do? Enter Darian Castle. Darian is basically like an independently contracted uh, bounty hunter and he is part of the House of Devils, which is this very like feared intense group gang. I don't even know in the city that we are in. And he gets hired by somebody to hunt down Lauren. When he meets her though, he realizes how vulnerable she is and how she has a lot of threats 
Ice coming towards her and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna help you out. I'm going to protect you. I'm gonna be like a bodyguard type of person because you are vulnerable. You're not a threat. Like I need to help you out because I feel bad for you. That is where we are at. We have a little bit of a forced proximity situation occurring now. We have just been introduced to kind of just like this new cast of characters within the novel and I'm here for it. I will say in the beginning when it very first started, I liked it. I really liked the writing style and I liked the characters. Like I was like, yeah, this is good, whatever. It's giving me major House of Earth and Blood vibes. As soon as Lauren and Darian met, it was it was over. It was over for me. I was like, yep, 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 yep. This is good. This is great. This is amazing. This is just as soon as they got together. And you guys, the moment when they met, the scene where they very first interact, I, no, wasn't okay. Wasn't okay. Took a picture of it. Almost sent it to Hannah, but then I realized Hannah was not at the same spot as me. So almost spoiled that for her. As soon as they got together, the novel took off and I'm in it. I will say, I do just want to talk about the comparisons with House of Earth and Blood and this book because I was a little worried. I was like, oh, oh is this going to be like exactly like House of Earth and Blood? It is not. There are major similarities for sure. I definitely think Miss Kayla Edwards was inspired by Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, and who can blame her? Who amongst us is not inspired by that book? The magic system is entirely different. The world is different. The creatures are different. The plot lines, I think the, you know, maybe roots of the plot line could be inspired. We're going in different directions. We have a fully realized, separate plot going on, which I love. I was a little bit worried. I was like, oh, I don't want this to be exactly like Crescent City. And it's not. It stands on its own, which is fantastic. I'm telling you guys right now, I'm only on page 100. I really hope that I am not wrong. I really hope that I am not proven wrong, but it's feeling like a five star. It is feeling like a new favorite series. I'm telling you, if this book ends up being as good as I think it's going to be, if we keep going in this direction, I am going to make it my life's purpose to spread the good word of City of Gods and Monsters. And you guys are going to be so annoyed because I am going to be shocked this book down everyone's throats. I am never going to shut up about it. So my for the rest of the day, Sean and I are going on a little date night. We're going to go get Italian food. I'm so excited because I'm starving right now. And when we get back, pretty much all of my friends uploaded today. So I'm very excited to watch their videos. And then I want to get some reading done. This book is a chunker, obviously with 700 pages. And because I do want to read three books in this vlog and like get it up in a timely manner, I do need to kind of like get going and get some good reading done. So I'm going to try to read 50 to 100 pages tonight for sure. And I will check in with you guys once I have read a little bit more and let you know how it's going. guys so time for another reading update on city of gods and monsters one i'm sorry on my bed again like honestly our apartment is a mess and i just don't want to clean it so we're just hanging out here in this vlog apparently and i do have her here with me as well and she likes to hang out on the bed. So that's what we're doing. First of all, I just wanna say that I literally two seconds ago just hit 2000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much. What the hell? Thank you guys so much. I'm literally blown away. Tomorrow is my five month anniversary on booktube. Not that I'm gonna celebrate it cause that would be weird, but it's just cool that I've hit this milestone right as I'm hitting another milestone. So I'm forever grateful. I can't even express it, but I am so, so grateful to every single person who has clicked the subscribe button, every single person who has watched a video, liked it, followed me on Instagram, anything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like this is literally what I've wanted to do for such a long time. And I just feel so lucky to have people who care to listen to me talk about books. Like what a concept. I'm kind of like amped up right now, which I unfortunately have some bad news to, about this book. So my mood might be all over the place, but I don't think I'm going to be giving this book a five star anymore. I think right now it's sitting at a four star, which is not bad. I am loving the world, the plot, the magic system, you know, the plot twists. I am loving Darien Castle. Oh my God, this man. Yeah, he's great. He is the star of this book. Unfortunately, Lauren, the main character of this book, Mm, not a huge fan of her, which is problematic because she is the main character of this book. So I simply cannot give the book five stars if I don't like the main character. My main issue with her at the moment is she's reading very young. She's kind of being annoying, immature, wet blanket, some might say, but she's just like, 
She's giving me like 16, 15, 16 year old YA fantasy, you know, that typical kind of character, the I'm not good, I'm this, I'm that, I'm so weak, I can't do anything, blah, 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 I'm so nervous. Like, it's just annoying. And this is an adult fantasy, so I think it is new adult, but like still, like that's like, I think she's at least 19, if not 20. So I, it just kind of sucks. And I want her to just like, chill out. Everything's okay, Lauren. And I will, in the beginning of the novel, I was like, well, she's a human. I can understand her being a little bit more reserved, a little bit more nervous, whatever. But like when she's with her friend, she's like this, like her best friend, her adopted sister, best friend that she's grown up with made a joke about sex. And she was like sweating and nervous and blushing and this and that. And I'm just like, babe, relax, please. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm not vibing with her, which sucks. But here's what I think is happening. So obviously I'm not gonna say it. I think I know what the big reveal is going to be at the end of this book, which I am here for. I'm all about it. I'm ready. I'm ready for book two already, to be honest with you. If what I think is going to happen is going to happen, I could see the author is setting up Lauren for a big character arc slash growth moment, probably in book two. And like, this is gonna be like where we start. This is going to be kind of the, just kind of this is the starting point and we're gonna get to see her sort of become a better, stronger, baddie version of herself, which, okay, fine. But like, does she have to be so... She's not terrible. I've read many worse main characters in my life. Okay, she's not horrible, but I just love everything else about this novel so, so much that I really wish that she wasn't like this. So I am going to read for the rest of the night. I'm hoping to get this book done by Sunday evening, and I will check in with you guys once I read a little bit more. Hey everyone. So it is time for my final check-in uh, for City of Gods and Monsters. I finished this last night. I needed to gather my thoughts. I needed, you know, the evening to kind of sleep on it, to kind of marinate in my feelings. I don't know if I've ever had this experience with a book before. I feel like I've done an entire 180 on this book. The girl that you guys saw in my earlier clips, especially in my first reading check-in, don't know her. Don't know her. She, she seems very nice, but I do not know her. And we feel very differently about this book. I did kind of start to see in my, you know, last check-in, uh, the clip that you guys just saw, I was kind of like feeling like Lauren was just not super fun to read about and she was kind of dragging the story down. That just continued throughout the story. Lauren, our main character, is the downfall of this book, which is so, so sad and very disappointing because I do wanna say before I go into the negatives, I'm standing firm with, I really love Darian. He is, you know, obviously our love interest, but he's also a main character because this is dual POV. So I really, really liked him. I found him interesting. I liked the devils. I liked the setting. I liked the plot. Like I loved a lot of aspects about this book and I think it has so much promise. And I think that's why I'm so frustrated because there are a lot of things working here. However, when you have a main character like Lauren, who is not very likable, who reads very immature, who doesn't really, you know, she's just not somebody that you want to root for. I want to make it clear too, you know, she has this, I talked about her being kind of just like weak and insecure and this and that. You don't have to be like Selena Sardothian, you know, you don't have to be this uber confident, really, really, you know, woman of the world, super experienced, super sassy, whatever. I'm not saying every character has to be like that. She just had like no personality. She had nothing thing. Like, give me something. Give me a little bit of humor. Give me a little bit of wit. Give me a little bit more of like your backstory of why you are the way that you are. I don't even feel like we got that. And it just became so evident the further that I got on, the less that we were going to get of an explanation or like why she is this way. And it's just not, it was not fun. It was not fun to read about. I will say, you know, there's, there's a lot of action at the end and, you know, she kind of has a moment where she, you know, steps up and helps to save the day, but it wasn't even like gratifying because I literally was not rooting for her the entire time. I truly, like, I've never felt this way about a book where I like everything else that is going on, but I, I don't want to say, like, despise, but, like, I really did not like Lauren. She just, not for me, can't root for her. I think she brought down the entire novel. And to be honest with you, I was very much looking forward to picking up the second book and I was going to pick it up like regardless, even though I wasn't really liking Lauren like a couple days ago when I checked in. I don't think I'm going to pick up the second book, you guys. I was so like, this put a really, Lauren just put a bad taste in my mouth. And like, I don't 
care what happens in the rest of the series. Like, I, I really don't. I don't know if there's anything that can be done that would make me excited to go through this again. I just feel drained. I feel exhausted by Lauren. Literally, I sat down yesterday and I was like, I just need to get this done because I'm so tired of being inside Lauren's brain. I also do want to note, there are direct comparisons to the Throne of Glass series, the Akatar series, and the Crescent City series. And I am not saying that like SJM invented certain things. Like I know that Sarah J Mass has taken inspiration from other authors and all of that, but there's like very specific things that occur in some of uh, Sarah J Mass's series that happen in here too. Very specific, like names are the same and magical concepts and everything like that. And so that was very interesting. I was kind of like, okay, this is interesting. This is weird. Once you read this, you'll kind of be like, that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. Wait, that sounds familiar too. It was funny. Like Hannah was just sending me as she was reading. She was like, this is literally in Throne of Glass. This is literally an Akatar. This exact scene happened in this book. And like, it was just, it was funny. We were both kind of losing our minds last night at some of the comparisons because it was like, okay, she's not even trying to hide it. Like this is, it was interesting. It was very, very interesting. All that being said, I am giving this book three stars, which wow, you know, what, what a journey we have been on, honestly. But I just, I did like aspects of the book, but there are just a couple things that I didn't like. Lauren being the main one really, 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 really did not like her. Like just no, 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 no. So I'm very sad to say that this book was just not for me. Do I recommend it? If you think your taste is very similar to mine, maybe not. But if it intrigues you, everyone that I follow on Goodreads and like that I'm friends with on Goodreads other than Hannah, they gave this book five stars. This has huge, huge praise. It might be me. This might just be a personal me thing that I didn't jive with. All right. So um, actually, while I was reading City of Gods and Monsters, I did end up starting to bleed a crystal bloom by Sarah A. Parker. This is the dark Rapunzel retelling. And I did that just because I needed kind of a break from Cogum. And so I wanted to start this as well. So this will be the second book that I'm reading for this fantasy romance reading vlog. And I'm liking it so far. I'm not quite sure what the plot is going to be yet, and I am on page 147, and I still don't really know where the plot is going, but I will just briefly tell you guys about the synopsis so far and kind of what I've read, and I was actually pleasantly surprised by the synopsis because when I uh, just looked it up on Goodreads, I was not really sure if it was going to be something that I would enjoy, but I am liking it so far. Basically what happened, our main character's name is Orlaith. She's the Rapunzel in this situation. When she was like two or three years old, uh, these like beasts came and and you know, slaughtered her entire village. She somehow survived and she was alone at this village. Then enter Rordan, I wanna say his name is, Rorik. It's not Rordan. Why? That can't be it. Rordan. Okay, nope, I was correct. Rordan, who is this like, I don't know if he's a king or just like a lord or something like that. He comes to this village, he sees like the desecration and everything. He comes across Orlaith and he sees like she's the only survivor. I think for a moment he was contemplating killing her, like to put her out of her misery basically. But then he one sees like these vines on her body and he's like, oh, that's interesting, kind of like veiny tattooed vines. And then two, he for whatever reason tastes her blood. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if she's like bleeding on her head and like whatever, but he tastes her blood. That seals the deal for him. And he even kind of like curses the gods when he tastes her blood and realizes that he needs to save her and bring her back to his kingdom. So he ends up doing that. And then we flash forward 19 years later, she has become his ward in his castle. So what makes me really happy because I was kind of worried that we were gonna have a situation where he was keeping her like captive, but she was like in love with him. And I was like, oh God, am I gonna be able to root for that? No, so the situation is he is raised her in his castle as uh, his ward, which like, that makes sense, fine. She was an orphan. She needed, you know, a place to stay, a place to grow up, all of that. Now I believe she's like 21 and he is trying to push her to get out of her comfort zone and go out and do things. He's like, you can stay here, you can live here, but like, you need to live your life. He orchestrates her to um, get some training from other people within the castle so she can like be a fighter and be strong and protect herself. He encourages her to like go out. He's like, why don't you come with me to the village? And she is actually very, very terrified of leaving the castle. She's kind of almost Stockholm syndrome herself. Like she does not want to leave at all. She uh, has like these kind of boundary lines like that she has sort of created in her head of how far she'll go. She also suffers with like night terrors, I think from memories of when she was younger. So she actually takes drugs, some type of magical drugs in this book and she is addicted to them. And I just read a part where Rorden like took them all from her. So now she's obviously in a ton of pain and very uncomfortable and it's like very tough. I like her character. She's funny. She's witty. She's definitely kind of meeker and you know, has, has some things to work through, but she does have a sense of humor, which I appreciate. And she also has a best friend who is an ocean drake and she's kind of like 
falling for him, has a crush on him, but she also very much is into Rorden and has this very like confusing relationship with him that she's not even really sure how to define, but she craves his approval and his attention. The last thing I read, she discovered some type of book in the castle and it basically seems like comparison to the Bible and she has had no religious teachings at all growing up, so she's very confused by it, but her friend, the ocean drake, his name is Kai, he kind of walks her through it and it has sort of the origins of all the magical creatures. I don't know if that's gonna be like a plot point. I am liking it. However, this book is automatically getting deducted points for me because there is a glossary at the beginning of this book of all of the like places in this kingdom and not only the kingdom, but like there's these names for like the safety line is what, you know, Orlaith, she has created these boundaries in her head and that's called the safety line. We have that defined. We have dark zones, which are places Orlaith has yet to explore. We have the den, which are Rorden's personal chambers, so on and so forth. But I don't like this because this means, and it's been confirmed now that I've read it, the author is not explaining, it's not showing us, it's not even really telling us in the story what these places are. She just gives them a name, like the den is Rorden's personal personal chambers and we'll be reading the book and she'll say, oh, Orlaith walked by the den, blah, 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 no explanation. So we are having to do some homework here and go to the glossary and memorize these terms and what they mean. And I'm not doing that, you guys. I did skim through the glossary just so I could talk about this, but I will never read a glossary of a book, especially in the beginning of the book. If it was at the end and there was like a pronunciation guide, that's fine. But no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. So I'm a little disappointed by that, but I will say I'm liking our main character. I am intrigued intrigued about like, where's the plot going? What does this book have to do with anything? What is the nature of Rorden and Orlaith's relationship? We don't see a lot of Rorden, kind of has this air of mystery about him and I don't really know what he's doing. I'm excited to keep going. So I am going to keep reading today. I would like to get a big chunk of this book done. I will definitely check in with you guys before I finish and I will give you guys an update. Hi guys. Okay. Was not planning on filming a check-in at this point, honestly at all tonight, hence like the face mask. So I apologize. I just had to like, <laughs> I just had to check in. Also like I can't really move my face too much because of this mask. So if, my, if I'm talking strange, I apologize. I just needed to talk to you guys for a second because our main character just went into heat. She went into heat, like, like an animal, like a cat. Like she literally was sitting at the breakfast table with like the whole, like, you know, his little court that he has. She's getting really hot and she's like, oh my gosh, you guys, it's like really, really hot in here. And they're like, no, it's not. And then it becomes like DEFCON 5 and Rorden or whatever his name is, you know, looks at his like uh, assistant person, I don't even know, Baz and says, get all the men out of the room, get them out of this corridor of the castle. We need to lock her up. And she's going into heat, literally like a cat. What, what am I reading? What is going on? So then we find Find out that this is like when women in this world hit sexual maturity. So instead of like, you know, getting your period or something like that, like they go into heat for like a week and she has to be barricaded and locked in her room, in her tower until she calms down. And she's literally like writhing and freaking out and going insane. And it honestly just like one of the like craziest things I think I've ever just read. But also tell me why like now I'm into the story a little bit more <laughs> because I appreciate that like we're, we're just getting something a little bit more interesting and literally as soon as this whole going into heat storyline kind of ended and she like calmed down we are now getting the plot is sort of getting started we are getting a new storyline i mean it, this it says this on the back so like i kind of knew it was coming but the like land that they live in is dangerous and these beasts are infiltrating the land and so people are getting scared and they're like moving away and like the whole area is in chaos and I think there's going to be a connection to Orlaith's past and these beasts and creatures and whatever. And so I wonder if like she's gonna be, because she survived them before, is she gonna be like able to survive them again? Is she gonna be instrumental in taking them down? I don't know, but I'm honestly not like hating this. I'm really, really not. It's probably gonna be like a three star, but you know what? Like I'm almost like kind of getting into the four star territory. If the second half of the book is like a bit more just like action packed and we have stuff like going on, but like the heat scene, I was like, what? What is happening? I did not expect that. When he said she's going into heat, I was like, oh, like this is a euphemism or something. No, she went into heat like an animal. So I needed to share that. If I have to know that, you guys have to know that. Sorry, we're gonna be in this misery together. But honestly, it kind of spiced the book up and now I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's see what happens. So uh, that's my update for Deblated Crystal Bloom. I'm definitely gonna finish this tonight. I think I have like two hours left in my audiobook, maybe even a little bit less. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow when I finished it with my final thoughts. Guys, I finished To Bleed a Crystal Bloom. <sighs> 
three stars. Very fine experience. Nothing to write home about, nothing that I want to like shout into the ether and make you guys all read. She was cute. She was good. She was fine. I do have to say the second half of the book was definitely more interesting. I kind of feel like the first half of the book was one giant prologue and we could have done without it. And yeah, there's just some things about this book that I'm kind of like... Why? Once again, the whole glossary thing, I mean, it just continued on throughout the book. Uh, I found out that Orlaith calls her tower the like stony stem or something like that. It's probably wrong. I didn't memorize the glossary because I'm not in high school anymore. So I didn't look, but yeah, she calls her tower the stony stem, zero context. So unless you studied prior, unless you did your homework that was assigned by Sarah A. Parker, uh, you wouldn't know that. I know this sounds harsh, but I just feel like it's kind of lazy writing to do that. And I'm, look, I'm nobody, okay? I'm not writing a book. I'm nothing, okay? Like, I want to make it so clear. But I'm just like, come on, like, take, take a second, take a paragraph to describe this place and why it's called this and whatever. So I didn't enjoy that. I also want to make a correction to something I said earlier in the video. I thought that the relationship between Orlaith and Rorden was not toxic. There were some toxic elements kind of shown in the second half of the book. I don't really know how I'm supposed to feel about Rorden, but I don't feel great about him. And also for a dual POV, and to be clear, we mostly get Orlaith's POV, but we also get Rorden, who is the like supposed love interest. I know nothing about this man. Who is he? I don't know how he feels about Orlaith. I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I feel like he was very underdeveloped. Uh, then there's also this introduction of a new character. And we have a little bit of a love triangle situation, but it was so like casual and surface level and happened towards the end that I'm just like, okay, very much setting up the second book, which cool, but how am I supposed to be invested in her potential journey with this other person? if I barely know the guy. And also with her friend Kai, the Ocean Drake, after the 50% mark, we never saw him again. No explanation. We never saw this man again. Like what happened to Kai? He was like kind of an important character in the first half of the book. We hear nothing about him. And like, fine, maybe he'll show up in the second book, but like, weird. And also that little like Bible thing that Orlaith found and brought to Kai doesn't really seem to matter anymore. That was just like a thing that we learned and then didn't hear a word about it moving forward in the rest of the novel. And uh, we also did not find out basically throughout the whole book, and this is not a spoiler because it is on the back, Orlaith does give like a little bit of her blood to Vorden. Like that's like part of their relationship. She puts a tiny bit of blood in like a goblet of water and he drinks it every night. We never find out why. We never find out why. And once again, maybe we'll find out in the second book, but like like, I feel like there was not enough done there. So that was interesting. Overall, I'm mildly curious what happens in the second book. Won't be running to pick it up. Definitely not. I think it does come out very soon. The book is called like To Pluck a Silver Stem or something like that. I'll put a picture up. It can't be To Pluck a Silver Stem. Can you imagine? To Pluck? There's no way. Nobody has ever put Pluck in a book title. I'm saying it right now. This was fine. As far as Rapunzel retellings go, sure. I would say it was totally fine. Average reading experience, didn't hate it, have some questions. I'm mostly confused to be honest with you. So not a great way to feel, but it was like, okay, cool, great, moving on. Okay, so the last book I will be reading in this vlog is The Song of the Marked by S.M. Gaither. I don't wanna speak too soon because as you guys have seen so far in this vlog, I've been burned terribly by the first two books, but this is going well. I am cautiously, cautiously optimistic, like the most cautiously optimistic I've ever been in my life. But this is fun so far. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think that I'm like 15% of the way done with the book. So just scratching the surface, it's also another long one. But this book is kind of fun so far. Oh, also, let me show you guys. So this book, very beautiful cover, right? I open the book. I, I, I turn to the first page. Hello. Hi. Who is she? She is our main character, Cassia. I love this. Are you kidding me? This is so fun. This was such a nice surprise. I was so excited to see her. This book is super beautiful. We also kind of have an explanation of the gods, the hierarchy of the gods in this world. And then we have a map. I love a good map. If there's a map at the beginning of the book, you know it's going to be a good time. Might be a little confusing, but it's a good time. And then the chapter headers have these like very pretty, scary tree branches. So I appreciate that. So Cassia is our main character. She is not, I don't know if she's like an assassin or if she is just kind of like trained to do maybe illegal stuff. And then like, there's a little bit of murder thrown in there. She and her friends in the beginning of this book, they are investigating what the king of like an opposing land is doing because there is this disease going around in like their entire kingdom and people are dying from it. And people are very upset with how the king is handling it. He's not really taking care of the people. He's not really finding a solution. So Cassia's like, 
keeper or whoever, I think he's like a lord, he employs Cassia and like her fellow assassin type people, I'm just gonna say, to go and investigate and find out what's going on. So that is how the novel starts. The first chapter, she chops someone's head off. I love that. It's been very funny so far. We have a very interesting cast of characters, which I'm really enjoying. So Cassia is the main character. Uh, Cassia does suffer from anxiety and that is something that she talks about a lot. I appreciate that. I never actually see that like fully talked about in a fantasy novel. Her best friend is named Rhea and she is also blind. And what I think is so cool, number one, her hearing is like incredible and better than everyone else's. She has this, this kind of this like super power hearing, but also the cutest thing. Rhea has like this little pet fox named Silverfoot and he goes and like if they're walking, he will go up the path from Rhea and telepathically like show her the path so she can go on her own. And, and it's just like the fox is the cutest thing ever. And he helps Rhea out and they're this dynamic duo. And I absolutely love that. And Rhea is the most just like deadpan, sarcastic, like you guys are all idiots type of person. And I love her. Then we have Rhea's younger brother. His name is Zev. He is like the comic relief of the group. And then we have Laurent who is like a half elf. And I don't know, he's kind of been missing. He like got hurt in the beginning of the book. So he's kind of just been like chilling on the side. And Cassia has met what I assume is going to be her love interest, very much a enemies to lovers in a fantasy novel, knife to the throat type of situation when they first meet. So that was very fun. And I'm liking this. I'm excited. It does give me Throne of Glass vibes for sure, which it does say it is compared to. So that's no problem to me. Like as long as it's not a total copycat, I'm into it and it doesn't feel like a copycat, but I'm liking this, you guys. This has potential. I'm not gonna say anything else because I do not want to get burned, but I'm really liking the uh, writing style. I'm liking all of our characters. I'm finding them all very interesting. And I'm curious to see like how people's different powers and strengths are going to come into play throughout the plot. I'm still very early on in the book though. I'm going to be reading more tonight and I will just check in with you guys tomorrow once I have another update. So I wanted to do one more check-in before I finish Song of the Marked. It is going so well. Thank you. Oh my God. I was so worried that this vlog was going to be an absolute dud, but this is turning out really good. I feel like it's in four-star territory. I'm not sure how much of the last clip I left in because I was really tripping over my own words. I was filming that so late last night. So far where we were at in the plot, uh, Cassia was actually captured by the uh, royal like guard and Elander is the name of our potential love interest. And um, he captures her just thinking that she's like some type of thief basically brings her to the castle and then uh something else i forgot to mention is the marked the reference uh to the marked in the title is actually something that cassia is and it basically means that she was sick with the plague but she survived it and she has been marked with gray hair and gray eyes so she's very easy detectable and being marked is like it's kind of this rare weird thing so she normally wears a glamour to hide it because she doesn't want the attention but the glamour wore off while she was in the castle dungeons so now everyone at the castle knows that she is marked and the king is very interested in this and he says hey i want to hire you to help me figure out like either a cure for the plague that's going around or he has this like theory that like the gods are involved and like they're angry at us and this is something going on so he wants her help with that as well so he sends cassia and a lander on this like journey to, to try to like find out some more evidence of what is going on and if they can you know come up with anything it's so cute the banter the banter is amazing in this book i have to say i love a lander he is so great and the audiobook narrator gave him an irish accent which like chef's kiss thank you and i'm just really liking this so far it's really fun we've had some really cool revelations in the book thus far i am so excited to see where the story goes this is a five book series i believe the first three are out they're all on ku and i'm definitely going to pick up the next one like i'm loving this so much so far i think i'm like 75 percent of the way done it's really really great and i did just want to talk about cassia's friends zev ria and laurent unfortunately they weren't really part of the meat of the story at all we met them in the beginning and now they're back but it's towards the end of the novel and they are going to be staying at the castle with Cassia. So that's cool. I hope that we get more of them in the future because I really like them and their dynamic and like their whole group is very fun. But because Cassia was kind of like on this sort of journey with Elander, we didn't really see much of them. So I'm curious to see how they will play a part in the future books, but I am loving this, you guys. This is super, super fun. Like this is, it definitely gives me Throne of Glass vibes and a little bit of From Blood and Ash vibes, like storyline wise. I think it does stand on its own. Truthfully, I really, really do. So I, I, I like it. I think if you like Throne of Glass, you will really, really love this because it has kind of a similar vibe, but it's still like its own 
week's story. So I'm going to finish this right now. I think I probably won't check in until tomorrow though, just because it's kind of getting late, but I'm gonna finish this now and then I will wrap up this vlog tomorrow. Hello you guys. So it is time for my final thoughts. I finished the Song of the Marked last night. I gave it five stars. You guys, I'm dying. I am so like this breathed new life into me. I can't, I can't like emphasize enough before I even get into the review. Read this book, read this book. It's on Kindle Unlimited, or you can get the physical copy on Amazon if you prefer that. There's also the audiobook. Just please read this. Please, please read this book. Oh my God, I'm saying this right now. This book deserves all the hype. I don't know how the rest of the series is going to go, but this book deserves the hype. This is, other than the Plated Prisoner series, this is like my new fave fantasy romance series on Kindle Unlimited. It's funny because when I wanted to make this video, I was like, oh, I'm going to do like a fantasy romance reading vlog in the month of June. Okay, cool. Why don't I do all Kindle Unlimited reads? Great. And I basically based this entire vlog around wanting to read City of Gods and Monsters, which turned out to be a big old snooze fest. And I picked this book like so randomly. I was just, you know, looking through my Goodreads and I was like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll pick this, like whatever. Had no draw to it, no feelings for it, like nothing. I was like, well, I'll just start with this one. You guys, this is amazing. This was so much fun. It's just like a great start to a fantasy romance series. And I would say it's more heavy on the fantasy and a little bit less heavy on the romance. This is like more, maybe 65% fantasy, 35% romance, but still really good. The romance still was great. And I just, I loved the plot. I loved the characters. I really liked everything about this book. Like I was planning to give this book four stars, a very solid start to the series. I was planning on reading the next book eventually. Like I was ready to have a very good, like this was a great book, best book of the video and call it a day. And then I read the ending of this book. The last two chapters in particular stunned me. My jaw unhinged at the last chapter. I literally, there's two big reveals at the end of this book that I did not see coming. I was totally stunned. I literally want to reread this so that I can go back and see if I noticed the clues more because definitely like some ominous thing going on in the background, but I could not guess what was going on. Like I was just totally stunned when those things were revealed at the end. I really don't wanna to say too much though, just because if you do read this and you don't guess what the ending is, it's a very fun and interesting reveal. I'm gonna to try to keep like my thoughts very vague. The ending was amazing. Even like the last line, the very last line of this book, I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. The reason I loved it so much is number one, it just totally turned everything that I thought I knew into a lie. And two, there is so much potential for the rest of the series. I have no idea where we're going to go, but I'm imagining like how things are going to pan out with these characters and like with this new plot line. And I am just like, what are we going to do? What, what does all this mean? I feel like everything I know is a lie, but in like the best way. And I'm so excited to see how it turns out. I cannot recommend this enough. Please read this. Please, please, please go read this. Please, I'm telling you, this book deserves all the hype. I feel like I don't really see people talking about this book. I saw it on Goodreads one day, added it to my TBR, never really thought about it again. And I am just, I'm in love. I'm in love with this book. I cannot wait to read the second one. I'm going to read the second one, I think next month. I wanna kind of space it out just so I don't binge it. After binging the Zodiac Academy series, I just realized I really need to not binge series because even if I'm enjoying them, binging them can get me a little bit exhausted and it might kind of lessen my enjoyment of the book. So I'm going to take my time and really enjoy this series. There are three books out currently. The fourth book comes out on June 28th, so very soon. And then there is a fifth book on Goodreads, but it's untitled and the release date is TBA. So we'll see, but there are going to be at least five books in this series, which is fantastic. Also to wrap it up, look at this. Look at this man. Isn't this so great? Once again, I love character art in books. Oh my gosh. So we have him at the end, Cassia at the beginning. That's all I'm gonna say on that. So this Kindle Unlimited fantasy romance reading vlog went in an entirely different direction. I thought that City of Gods and Monsters was going to be like a five-star, amazing, beautiful, wonderful book. Twas not. I thought that To Bleed a Crystal Bloom would be super great too. And it was like the most average reading experience of my life. And then this I thought was going to be like fine, cool, whatever. And it blew me away. It literally, I was shocked at the ending and I loved it. And I cannot wait to see where the series goes. Oh my God, like I can't say it enough. Please read this and then message me on Instagram and tell me your reaction to the ending and we can just freak out together. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for my Kindle Unlimited fantasy romance reading vlog. I had such a fun time over the last week reading these three books. I am glad that I read City of Gods and Monsters and To Bleed a Crystal Bloom, even though I didn't love them. They were definitely on my mind for a while. So I'm glad to know that they are not for me. And I'm just so excited that I found a new series. Like this is a success. I have a five-star new favorite fantasy romance series. Thank you to the fantasy romance gods. If you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave a uh, 
like a music note uh, to represent the song of the marked. I don't know, sounds cute. Let's leave a music note in the comments if you would like. As always, my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below so you guys can follow me on there anytime. Also a reminder, I have Hannah's channel and I'm also going to have Hannah's video of her reading City of Gods and Monsters. So make sure that you guys go subscribe to her and watch her video as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will catch you guys in the next one.